Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast, where we interview remarkable people and share strategies for mastering money and living a meaningful life. With your host, Grant Sabatier, creator of Millennial Money and author of Financial Freedom, a proven path to all the money you will ever need. Hey everyone, it's Grant Sabatier. Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm so excited today to have Michael Heifler, the Director of Investor Relations at General Motors. This guy is big time and I'm so excited to dive into this conversation. I haven't talked a lot about individual stock investing on the podcast, but as you know, I do invest in individual equities. Over 80% of my net worth since 2010 has been through growth in individual stocks. And I'm a buy and hold investor. I'm investing for the long term. And so as we shift into this increasingly uh, sustainable investing topic in this world, I wanted to chat with someone from General Motors because there's just so much exciting stuff happening there with the electronic vehicle space. Really kind of came out of left field for me, honestly, Michael. Everyone talks about Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. And here we hear that GM is planning to invest over $27 billion into the electronic vehicle market and wanted to chat with you about this. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Grant. Uh, It's great to be with you. So from recent press releases, I learned that GM's making a massive push into EVs. Can you share a few of the things that you all are doing? You know, we've been involved in EVs for a number of years. Um, We, uh, back in the 90s, produced one of the first EVs, uh, the EV1. And uh, we uh, followed that up with uh, our uh, Bolt, uh, with a, a V for victory, and uh, our Bolt. Uh, and, you know, I'm on my second Bolt. I'm an EV enthusiast. I've been driving these vehicles since 2012. Um, and I've, I've got a reservation in for our new Hummer EV. And I can tell you, you know, as a consumer and, and somebody who has a passion for uh, you know, transportation and vehicles. Uh, EVs are wonderful to drive. They're um, just a pleasure. They're quiet. Uh, they have instant torque. So, you know, it's almost like you think the car to go where you want it to go. Uh, they have low center of gravity and they handle really well. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing to wake up in the morning where you can uh, charge your vehicle overnight in your, your driveway or your garage. And, and have a, a full tank, so to speak, uh, before you leave the house in the morning. So it is, um, it, it's just a fantastic experience and uh, just a, a pleasure. So we are, um, we are accelerating our rollout of exciting new EVs. So we are going to introduce between now and 2025, 30 new EVs. That's, that's a remarkable number of new products. And um, two thirds of those are gonna be in the US. Uh, A third of them are gonna be in China. They're gonna span across all our brands. Um, And they're gonna be different types of vehicles. So I mentioned the Hummer EV, which is a super truck. This thing is so cool, Grant. Uh, It goes zero to 60 in three seconds. 350, 350 miles of range. And the things that this vehicle can do, uh, it is the Swiss Army knife of vehicles. Uh, it's fantastic on the road, and it, there is no vehicle that, that is its equal off-road. And we've got some really cool features that you, you've never seen on a vehicle before. Um, the, the car can uh, uh, drive diagonally to, to uh, avoid obstacles off-road. Um, there's something called an extract mode. If you get into, you know, an, a, a rough situation with rocks, it'll, it'll, you know, raise the vehicle and, uh, you will clear, uh, the obstacle. Um, it, it, there, there are so many neat things. Uh, it incorporates super cruise, which is our, uh, driver, uh, assist feature, the next generation of that technology. So cool. So cool. And, um, then we, we also are going to follow that up with our, uh, Cadillac Lyric which is a beautiful vehicle. It's a mid-sized crossover. Uh, so the Hummer will launch in uh, about a year's time in the fall of 21. Uh, the Lyric will be avail- available in the first part of 22. And uh, so, you know, it's gonna really hit that cream 
premium crossover market and uh, uh, you know with features again that you know the market hasn't seen before so re really really neat stuff and we're going to follow that up with um, you know vehicles that that people love to drive uh, like pickup trucks where you know we we own a significant portion of the pickup truck market and boy I can tell you you know the stuff that we're coming out with is going to be really cool um, so uh, you know, we, we uh, are seeing that the market is much more res receptive and is, is growing in terms of interest in EVs. So we, we decided uh, this year, um, in, in the midst of COVID, to accelerate our investment in EVs. So we have planned on uh, spending about $20 billion uh, over the next few years in, in electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles. We'll be spending $27 billion. And uh, you know we are um, we, we are complete believers in a zero emissions future, right? Uh, our vision at the company is zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. And we have the technology to make that vision a reality in the future. So that's that's what we're working on. And like I said, uh, you know, G, um, never been a better time to to be at GM. Um, we're attracting all, all sorts of talent, um, uh, you know, from, from different industries, uh, people who believe in the mission, who want to make it happen, and they know that GM can bring it to life. So, um, you know, I, I can tell you, you know, from a, a battery perspective, an EV perspective, uh, you know, the, the technology is really critical to, uh, uh, you know, improving performance, uh, lowering the costs. And, and you know, getting more people into the vehicles. We wanna get everyone in an EV. So uh, we have um, what we call our Ultium uh, battery platform. And that allows us to offer vehicles with up to 450 miles of range. And we recently talked about some of the, the strides that we're making in terms of uh, performance. We're doubling our energy density. And within the next few years, we're going to reduce our costs by grant a remarkable 60%. Uh, so, you know, we're going to drive the, those costs down. We're going to get more people coming into the product. Uh, and, you know, we are uniquely positioned because we've got this fabulous manufacturing footprint and a highly skilled uh, and, and capable and eager workforce, you know, at, you know in, in the factories and in the engineering staff. So um, we, we are, you know, going to leverage, uh, you know, those, those assets, those attributes. And, you know, that's going to be a tough thing for some of these startups to replicate because we've got the experience there in, in producing, um, you know, it, um, in, in scale, uh, high quality vehicles, you know, reliable, high quality vehicles. So uh, we are, as I mentioned, you know, really designing vehicles for every kind of lifestyle. And um, you know those are those are really key uh, parts of the strategy in terms of you know bringing um, you know EVs to everyone. Yeah, I think two things you have going for you, as you mentioned, you have this platform and your ability to partner with other brands. I think I read it was no. correct that are you are you the platform that Nissan is now or not Nissan Honda is now building uh, their electronic vehicles on? And can you talk about just this platform? mindset, which I, I, I noticed too, you have a partner in China, you have one of the best selling, maybe the best selling EV currently in China, this like tiny micro car, the name of it escapes me. But the platform here, in addition to just the footprint, really seems like the differentiator. Yeah, I think you're spot on, Grant. Let me, let me take a, a couple of minutes and we'll, we'll walk through, um, you know, the, the, the subjects that you brought up. So, um, you know, when it comes to the, the uh, platform, I, I believe I mentioned Altium, and you know, that's the brand name for um, the, the platform that we've developed for EVs. And, you know, the key things to think about with Altium, and it's sort of, it, it is our secret weapon, if you will. It's a differentiated approach that we're taking to uh, developing EVs. And uh, it, it, it really uh, plays on a, a few themes. One, um, it, it is uh, highly flexible, it's modular, and it's highly scalable. And, and you know, what, what, what do I mean by that? Well, um, you know, we, we can, off of a common building block, okay, the, the cell itself, 
make um, modules that we can, you know, put into uh, um, battery packs that uh, can accommodate all different kinds of vehicles. So uh, we can offer the same basic architecture, produce a uh, small crossover, and then we can um, just add different modules to that same basic architecture and make a very large pickup truck. Uh, using you know these these common items, right? So getting uh, the, the the scale uh, that that's so necessary to drive down costs. So uh, we we are doing this from the ground up. We're not taking a, a combustion vehicle and uh, modifying it to make it an EV. We're, we're we're doing this in a very thoughtful way, where we can scale this into the millions. In fact. We've talked about by 2025 uh, being in a position to sell over a million units, both in, in the US and in China, uh, off of that Ultium platform. So, uh, not everyone in the industry um, has, uh, uh, you know, actually, fortunately for us, uh, you know, pursued this kind of strategy and um, has, has made the necessary investments to uh, really lead in this transition to EVs. So that's okay. Um, we see that as an opportunity. And uh, we are very willing to partner with others who are like-minded, um, where we can you know, uh, potentially license this technology, uh, create an additional revenue stream for our, our company, our shareholders, and um, you know, really bring uh, you know the EVs to a broader population and, and really fulfill our mission. So uh, you know, you mentioned Honda. Honda has been a great partner to GM. Uh, we've been working with Honda for some time um, on all different technologies, and you know, um, it, it's Honda is a uh, a really well known. Uh, engineering firm. I mean, their, their prowess in engineering is, is renowned. Um, and our engineers and their engineers work really well together. And uh, we've been collaborating with them on technologies like fuel cells. Uh, we have an autonomous vehicle uh, business called Cruise. And we've been working with Honda on what we call the Cruise Origin, which is a shared autonomous vehicle uh, which is so cool, Grant, and and uh, would love to get you a picture of that and get you into one of those vehicles in the future. But um, you know that that's another element of our investment story. But Honda has been right there with us, so we are uh, working with Honda on two of their uh, you know popular vehicles that they sell in North America. We're actually going to be you know collaborating with them and actually producing those vehicles for them. You know, what's interesting about this is traditionally, you know, investors like smaller upstart companies because they see more upside. You know, when you read any competitive strategy book, you know, the idea is how do you create your moat and your blue ocean and move quickly and adapt. And you see a lot of these younger companies trying to do so many things at once. But what I hear from you, and I actually hadn't thought about until this conversation, is your scale is actually your asset here. Uh, you're not like a you know million pound ship that slowly has to turn in the night. You're making changes. It sounds like across your entire organization, and that your your breadth and depth is actually the asset here because it's going to allow you to get into more markets faster, build the technology faster, attract the talent faster. Can you talk about how your size is an asset in this case? Yeah, I, I want to get into that, and and I want to touch on something that um, you mentioned before in terms of the startups. You know, one of the things that um, is different at GM these days is speed. Um, you know, I think we all realize that startups have, you know, advantages of speed. Um, we are internalizing those advantages as well. And uh, what we're doing there is, um, you know, taking uh, the, the, the lessons that we learned actually through COVID this year, um, working from home, um, leveraging, uh, you know, the technology tools that, that we've had for some time, but really, you know, culturally, we are now really pushing hard and taking advantage of them. So computer-aided design. Um, I mentioned, you know, Ultium and, and the flexibility. Well, that flexibility and that reuse allows us, in combination with, uh, you know, leveraging these computer-aided tools, 
uh, to compress development times. So Grant, this is really cool. We are reducing our development times by close to 50%. Hmm. And you know, that means that we can spin off more vehicles off of that same architecture faster. We can meet uh, the consumer demand uh, you know, in, in a much better way, much more quickly. And um, that, that's unique. And uh, you know, within the traditional auto world, that didn't really exist, and we're leading that. We are, we are, you know, compressing those development times, and I, I think that that's going to be critical. So I think it's a combination of the scale that we have, and um, you know, having that flexibility, and thinking about ways to work smarter uh, to accomplish things faster, and and that's the direction that the organization is, is um, you know, pushing towards. So um, you know, from a scale perspective. Uh, you know, having the uh, the, the uh, ability really, we, we sell more vehicles in the in the U.S. than anyone else. Hmm. Right? We have um, we have the distribution, uh, we have the service points, um, we we have uh, you know an, an enormous ability to leverage uh, purchasing, uh, the engineering, and uh, you know when you think about on a traditional vehicle. Uh, about 75 to 80 percent of the content is outside of the powertrain. So we've we've got um, you know all of these terrific uh, you know advantages outside of the powertrain in, when it comes to scale. You know you know a seat. Um, we we make a lot of seats. Uh, you know we we um, we have really uh, differentiated features. Uh, it, it, like in our pickup trucks, our tailgates, uh, we have something called a multi-pro tailgate. And, it, you know, it's, again, it's like a, the Swiss Army knife, knife of tailgates. It allows us, uh, you know, to offer our customer, you know, all different features and functions that uh, are, are valuable uh, to the customer that we've learned uh, that the customer, you know, really uh, wants and needs over a period of time. So um, we're, we're able to take all of, uh, you know, the things that we do as a, a full-line manufacturer and, you know, one, one with tremendous brand loyalty and transfer that over to the EV world. So now the $10 trillion question, why should someone invest in GM instead or maybe in addition to Tesla? You know, for, for one thing, I think the, the Hummer EV, the Lyric, shows, uh, you know, the investor the direction that the product is going in, right? So, you know, we, we plan on being the number one seller of EVs. And, uh, you know, I, I think you can see that we're making amazing, beautiful product. And uh, that, that, that product is going to be very successful in the marketplace. And... All that you're seeing right now, Grant, is really the, the, the tip of the iceberg. But I think there's really um, three, uh, three things to consider from a, you know, an optionality perspective, uh, you know, from an investment perspective, um, you know, beyond the fact that you know, valuation is absurdly low right now. Um, and one, one is you know, our ability to transition into EVs and be successful in EVs. And, and use EVs as an opportunity to grow. We talked about some of the you know, licensing potential of EVs, but when you look um, just really at the, the US for, for a moment, and you look at our sales, um, where, uh, you know, where EVs are taking off, there's about 10 or so states, you know, generally on the coast, and uh, look at the GM market share in those states and relative to our overall, you know, our national market share, we're actually under indexed in those states. So by leveraging the technology, coming out with really compelling EVs, if we were just to normalize our share in those 10 states, we would pick up 200 basis points of overall market share. So that's 280,000 units. So and, and that's just one example, you know, one, one possibility of how, you know, this can translate into tangible growth for GM, you know, in our business. And we've talked about EVs being as profitable or more profitable than our, our ICE vehicles. So 
Um, EVs are a tremendous growth opportunity. I mentioned Cruise earlier. That's our autonomous vehicle uh, business. Uh, we own, uh, you know, between 75 and 80 percent of that business. We do have some minority uh, investors in there, and we are a leader in uh, autonomous vehicle technology. We plan on, um, you know, uh, solving, uh, you know, that uh, that equation and getting that business uh, commercialized. And Grant, when that happens, look out. Uh, you know, the, the growth potential there, we're talking a multi-trillion dollar TAM. And uh, we, that business could easily eclipse our, our, our you know, business today, which is somewhere around 150 billion revenue business. So that's the type of growth potential that, that we see in autonomous. And the third thing um, I would point you to is connectivity and software. So we've been hiring thousands of software engineers. We've, we've been attracting tremendous software talent. And um, I think it's gonna open the doors to new revenue streams that are recurring in nature for GM uh, that are really gonna be able to move the needle. And let me, let me give you an example. I mentioned uh, Super Cruise earlier, right? We have uh, the leading um, you know, driver assistance uh, software-based uh, technology. Um, it's, it's been rated by third parties and we've come out ahead. And uh, we are driving the cost of the hardware down so dramatically that we could envision a future state where potentially um, you go into a Cadillac dealer and all the vehicles will have the hardware embedded in them. Okay, and a lot of this is safety uh, hardware, so related to you know what's called uh, ADAS, um, and uh, the uh, the the consumer will have a choice. Uh, Jing, uh, do you want to buy Super Cruise, you know, with your purchase, uh, and and you know make the upfront investment, uh, you know, and this is an amazing amazing product. In fact, it's on our our CT6 sedans today, but it will be rolled out to over 20 new products uh, in the next you know two or three years, and. Um, what we've heard back from consumers who have the feature, 85% of them grant, 85% say that they uh, will only buy or will only consider buying a vehicle in the future with that feature. Wow. That is remarkable. And uh, so anyway, they could buy it up front, you know, it's, it's maybe a few thousand dollar option, um, or uh, they could choose, maybe in the future, they may be going on a long road trip over the weekend, or they might be driving for a month or two. Um, they may choose to uh, push their OnStar button, okay? Um, OnStar is our, you know, proprietary telematic system, you know, the connection between uh, the vehicle and, and GM. And they may speak to somebody in OnStar and say, hey, I'd like to um, have Super Cruise over the weekend. And we'll say, terrific. And we will over the air update hmm. Super Cruise, the cool. software that enables this. Um, and they will have that functionality. And of course, you know, for, for it be, and, uh, and it, you know, there's, there's all sorts of, um, possibilities that the technology opens up. And the, those are the kind of things that we're thinking about. Um, we recently announced that we're getting into the insurance business. Uh, I saw that, taking, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so another, another you know, uh, new, new potential revenue stream, leveraging, you know, the, 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 the data and telematics capability of GM, uh, doing it in a very respectful way with, with our consumers, with consent, um, but, you know, doing it in a way where, you know, we can really price this more effectively and, you know, because we can, you know, we can see what's going on with the vehicle in terms of, you know, driving patterns and behaviors and uh, we can price the risk better. So it's, it, it, it's these kind of things, um, you know, that get me so excited. I wake up in the morning um, every day and uh, it's, it, you know, I, I'm, I feel so grateful to be part of this. Because, uh, you know, not only is it a tremendous opportunity for our investors, um, but, you know, we're, we're doing the right things by our customers and society overall. 
Yeah, you know, you've said so much there. I, I actually really appreciate this conversation because you've articulated really a business strategy at its core. And I think the insurance business is a no brainer for you. I think that's gonna be immensely profitable and you're gonna be able to pass that savings on to consumers as well. I love the insurance business from an investment standpoint. I wanna ask about sort of your core market. You mentioned Tesla is kind of on the coast. You know, who is the, the, the typical GM driver and are you getting younger Americans into GMs as well? Yeah, um, great question. So. Um, you know, we, we uh, offer a wide range of vehicles, as you pointed out, Brian. So we've got a lot of folks who, you know, are, um, you know, even you know, like early on in, in their, uh, their careers and, and their life. And, um, you know, they, they may be buying, um, you know, sort of an entry level uh, crossover from us. Um, you know, crossovers have gained in popularity, uh, you know, over, over sedans, as you probably know. In, in recent years, and that trend just continues to accelerate. Um, so, you know, we, we, we bring people into our brains, um, you know, offering a, a wide uh, range of, uh, um, you know, options in terms of affordability. Uh, and, uh, you know, as, um, you know, as they get to know uh, the company, we, we um, and, and, and benefit from, you know, the use of our products. Uh, we, we are uh, in a position to offer them, um, you know, vehicles that would meet their changing lifestyle. So, you know, um, maybe that, that young professional gets married, uh, they, have, they have children, um, you know, they need a little bit larger vehicle, um, you know, so maybe going from, you know, a, a Chevy Trax or an Equinox, um, you know, they're going to go into potentially a, a Chevrolet Traverse, which is a, a large crossover with three rows and, you know, just terrific for, you know, family um, utility. Uh, you know, then there's, there's um, our truck buyers who, uh, you know, in many cases uh, use the truck for work purposes, um, but increasingly we're seeing in that market as well as the, uh, the truck product has evolved um, in recent years, um, we're seeing people, you know, use trucks for, for lifestyle purposes. Um, you know, uh, with, with the pandemic, uh, a lot of folks are, um, you know, going into boating, uh, um, trailering, uh, you know, uh, RV camping, that kind of thing. And, you know, our, our products really fit the bill that way. And so much so, um, you know, quite frankly, that um, we're having, a, you know, a difficult time keeping, um, keeping the vehicles in stock. They're, you know, as soon as we make them, they, they hit the lots and they're, they're gone. Um, so, uh, you know, our, our, our truck buyer, um, you know, is, is a combination of uh, work and also um, increasingly lifestyle. Uh, the truck product, uh, now um, we are seeing in the luxury segment, enormous growth. So we have sub-brands uh, in, in GMC, they're called Denali and AT4, uh, in uh, Chevrolet, uh, Silver, uh, Silverado, there's the high country version of that truck. Um, and uh, you know, the, these vehicles um, are, are replacing, in some cases, uh, luxury crossovers or luxury sedans. And uh, they just have all the amenities, all the safety features, they, they, they ride beautifully. And you have the utility of having the bed and, and, and uh, you know, a crew cab, which is an extended four door uh, where um, there's, there's plenty of interior space. I'm driving one right now. I love the truck. My family loves it. You know, um, I mean, the, the, the interesting thing is I've, I've got three boys and my youngest is a, a junior in high school. And he says, Dad, I love this truck. But, you know, there's one thing that would make this truck better. So I said, okay, Eric, what, what's that? If it was an EV. So, you know, that's, that's where the younger generation, that's where their, their, their you know, minds are at. And uh, I mean, you know, it doesn't hurt that he's, he's had the experience from his dad, you know, of driving the EVs, which, you know, we, we, we all love. Um, you know, he just got his license and, and he's driving the Bolt as well. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, I love our positioning. I love, you know, that we can leverage the, the, the strengths that we have in our brains, um, you know, not just 
uh, you know, the umbrella brands, but, you know, some of these um, nameplates, uh, you know, that's where there's a, a ton of brand equity. And also, Grant, really, the profitability within the core business, this is something that I want to go back to your, your, your previous question about the investment thesis in GM. That profitability allows us to make, you know, these investments, that $27 billion that I mentioned earlier. Um, we can do that internally. So we don't have to go out and dilute our shareholders, raise external capital. We can do this, you know, through our internal resources. And I think that, that that's another differentiator. Everyone, this is Michael Heifler, Director of Investor Relations from General Motors. Thanks for coming on the show and hope to, I'll have you back in a year or so once the Hummer's out and I've given it yeah. a test ride. I'd love to, to dig in. It's still so early from an investment standpoint is what I'm hearing. So thanks for taking the time. I hope, hope you have a good rest of your week. Thanks, Grant.